Good morning, everyone. So thank you for the introduction. Uh, so Aero Farms is an indoor vertical farming company uh, founded in 2004. And before I get into the technology uh, and, and kind of some of our impact on the community in Newark, New Jersey, where we have our headquarters, uh, I'd like to talk briefly about growing, about farming, about agriculture. Now, humans have been growing food deliberately in, on, on plots of land since 9,500 BC in the Levant. So that makes it, what, 11 and a half thousand years of, of growing food. So we've been farming for a very, very long time. But just in the most recent uh, four decades or so, uh, farmers have been under pressure to use, to go to more extreme lengths to produce yield on the land that they have. So I, I'd like to pose a question for you, and uh, I have to admit I actually looked up the answer before this talk, so, <laughs> but any guesses on, on how much arable land the Earth has lost in the last 40 years? Let's say in percentage. Yeah. We got 20%, 30%, 60. Six, what was that? Six zero? All right, so according to a 2015 uh, meta-analysis, it's actually one third. And if you're not scared by this number, <laughs> I'd, I'd encourage you to read it again. 40 years and one-third of our, our arable land. And this is just going to be exacerbated in the coming decades by increasing population. The UN estimates actually 9.7 billion people by 2050. Um, but climate change is also going to change where we're able to grow land. So there are all of these macro pressures on, on agriculture. Um, and in addition to land, we've got the water issue. Um, I read recently that in India, by 2030, in 12 years from now, the available fresh water will be half of the demand. 12 years from now. So, on top of all this, you know, we, and we're losing, we're losing land, by the way, due to over-fertilization, uh, too much uh, pesticide use poisons the, poisons the, the dirt, the soil. Um, and then we have drought, of course. And in California, uh, where 90% of the, the fresh produce for the rest of the United States is grown, uh, we have drought, but we also have uh, food contamination issues that, that plague uh, fresh produce. And what we do grow, a lot of it goes to waste in the cold chain and then also on the plate. In the United States, uh, the USDA estimates a total of 76% of the produce grown, uh, the red romaine and leaf lettuce that's grown, ends up not being eaten. So we have a, 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 a real need for a new way of thinking about growing. And, you know, we'll never completely... Uh, it's not our vision to replace farming totally, of course. Um, but, but we do, as a, as a species, we need new ideas here. You know, 11,000 years, uh, and, and we, need, we need new paradigms. So the company I work for, Aero Farms, we're trying to prove that one of these new ideas is feasible, um, in particular for leafy green vegetables, um, but there's nothing stopping us from growing other things. Uh, so, let's talk about the technology. We grow on systems like this inside of a, inside of a warehouse building. The building is climate controlled. We use LED lighting uh, above the plant canopy. The, the growth medium, and so the, the surface that the seeds germinate on and then grow on is actually a, a recycled uh, plastic fabric. 
So we can you know, use, use old water bottles or anything to, uh, to produce this material. And underneath, we have a solution chamber. So we have basically a, a pan that uh, serves to protect the roots. And then we have misting nozzles inside of, this, uh, inside of there that provide water and nutrients directly to the roots of the plants um, without, without using soil. So the, the nutrients are dissolved in the water, and, and that's how we feed the plants. And so the, the leaves of the plants uh, actually never come in contact with the nutrient solution or the water directly. Um, and because we're growing inside a controlled environment, climate controlled, and also uh, we have pest controls in place, you know, uh, we actually don't need to use any pesticides uh, to grow the product. So uh, in contrast with um, uh, you know, organic field-grown produce where you most likely will be using organic pesticides of some kind, um, the, the leaves never come in contact with, with pesticides. So you don't have to wash them. And if you remember, I mentioned the, uh, the cross-contamination of E. coli in the lettuce industry in the United States. In the United States, that's often uh, thought to be caused by the washing step, ironically, because you can spread a small amount of contaminant over a lot of volume of product. This is what uh, some of our red romaine lettuce under uh, blue and red LED light looks like inside the growing system. And this is a cross-sectional view of our leaf canopy and our root system. And you can see the, the growth medium on top of the metal frame there. Next, I'd like to show you a quick clip that's a time lapse uh, of some of our red romaine seeds germinating and growing over their 14-day life cycle, so two weeks until harvest. So you can see we we densely populate the, the cloth with seeds and grow basically a carpet of, of product. And at about 14 days old, then we, we harvest the product, wash the, the cloth, and start the process over again. Now, I mentioned the nutrient delivery. The water that's delivered to the roots, the excess actually drips down, is collected, and then recirculated again. And in this way, we can... We can conserve water, um, approximately one twentieth of the water consumption of a field farm. This is a uh, shot at our, uh, our large flagship facility in Newark, New Jersey. And uh, if you've never been to Newark, it's an urban area. We're in a uh, location that uh, it's an industrial area with kind of a, enough uh, abandoned buildings and so on. And, um, this warehouse used to be a steel factory, a steel mill, um, before it was a farm. So our, our growing systems are approximately um, 11 meters or so high, uh, with 12 vertical, vertically stacked levels. And we grow approximately a quarter million kilos of product per year in this facility. Next year, we're doubling the size of this facility When you grow inside a controlled environment, um, you have, you have uh, certain superpowers that, that uh, typical farmers don't have that maybe they, they wish they had. Like, we can control the weather, we can control the, the light, um, and we can control irrigation and nutrient delivery like you just can't in a field. And so when we think about the potential that a seed has. Um, we're not interested in, for example, changing the genetics of the seed to match this uh, difficult growing environment outside. Um, we're actually more interested in uh, what, is, what is paradise for this seed and how can, we, how can we create that using engineering, using science, and using an iterative approach to growing. 
and that's what we do. We iterate up to 25 times per year uh, because the growth cycle is two weeks long, uh, 20, 26 almost, uh, times per year in one location in the farm. So between all of our grow towers, you know, we're, we're really, we have a new opportunity to uh, enhance the inputs that we're giving the plants every one or two days. We can, we can try something a little different to see if it will produce maybe a more nutritious or uh, more um, flavorful product or boost yield, boost producti productivity per, uh, per the in inputs that we provide the plants. And I actually, I work on the learning and adapting part, the sensing, learning and adapting part of this cycle uh, in my role. And all of these components need to be in place, need to be, need to be uh, robust for this to be a success. Some of the ways we look at uh, flavor and nutrition are through, uh, you know, just uh, scientific studies uh, and and research, research projects with, um, with universities on flavor and nutrition. Um, and we also look at, uh, one of the cool ways that we, we look at product quality uh, is by using multispectral imaging of the plants. So we, we image all of the, the plants that we harvest, and we can use that information to detect the most minute changes in quality or uh, chlorophyll content in the leaves and so on. This is just a shot of our, an aerial shot of our farm before it was a farm and then in its current state. And next year, the, the building in the background there will be transformed into another grow room uh, equal to the size of this one. Uh, in the upper left corner is Mayor of Newark, Ross Baraka, on our, in our groundbreaking. And uh, we've received the warmest of welcomes from the city of Newark uh, for the kind of unique job opportunities that we're bringing the area. Um, and we also um, are very happy to have the support of the, the local government in, in, in our efforts. We have a small farm in the background of this photo uh, at a school in Newark, New Jersey. And here the the, the children actually operate the farm themselves. They sow the seeds, watch them grow, harvest the, 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 the leaves, and enjoy them during their school lunches. And it's integrated with the biology curriculum as well, so that the children can learn quite a lot about plants, uh, something about farming, and, and they can also learn to appreciate uh, eating salad, eating healthy food. <laughs> And this is Michelle Obama during her visit to that school, and we were happy to have her mention us on, on Twitter. <laughs> Hopefully I've shown you how a technology like indoor farming can address a broad collection of the sustainable development goals set forth by the UN. And um, I would welcome uh, anyone to join me uh, at the glass house after the after the talk, so thank you so much for listening, and I pr uh, appreciate your time. Thank you very much.